Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a holy and anointed one. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, many of you know uh, Dr. Nancy Dufresne, and uh, we've come to, to enjoy the word of God that she brings and, and to love, love her. We, uh, we've met her, and, and, and we, we honor her, and when she says something, we take it to heart because it's always of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Lord, um, the Lord spoke to her uh, one day, and he, uh, he told her this phrase, in rejoicing, the power flows. And so when we're rejoicing in the Lord, a lot more happens when we're worshiping him that we don't know. We think we're just loving on, on the Father. We're just loving on him and praising Jesus and and, and exalting the Holy Spirit, so much more happens when, when, you, when you do that. So in rejoicing, the power flows, especially when you're going through a problem or you got to make a decision uh, or you're just, you're just feeling kind of dry. You know, when you start worshiping God and you start rejoicing, worshiping is one thing, but when you're rejoicing, you know, halal, hallelujah, you know, praising him. You know, he, the power starts flowing. Immediately the Holy Spirit comes and he, he, and he ministers to us. And, and the angels come and minister to us. So in, in rejoicing, the power flows. Amen. So we're going to talk about that this morning. Uh, let's talk about uh, Paul and Silas as an example. And, and let's turn to Acts 16. Verses uh, 25 and 26 and then down to 27. We know that Paul and Silas, uh, they were, um, um, you know, put in prison. You know, they, uh, they cast out a demon and, uh, and their owners got mad. <laughs> uh, they, there was a, a spirit of divination on this, this lady and, and uh, she was making a lot of money for, for uh, the people or her masters rather. And uh, they got mad. They're like, this, there's, we can't, she can't divine, divine anymore. <laughs> you know, she can't uh, fortune tell or whatever. And so they got really mad, and they put Paul and Silas in jail. So we know that, right? And so uh, let's pick up in verse 25. We know that they were, they put them into, verse 24 says, they put them deep down to the innermost prison, and they made their uh, feet fast in the stocks. So they were really prisoners. And, uh, and it's really dark down there, and uh, it's, it's a, the, the horrible portion of the prison. So verse 25 says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. It says, um, And the prisoners heard them. So God's about to do something with this praise and worship. It's all of the prisoners are, are, are hearing this. You know, if you're in a prison, you're probably hearing a, you know, I'm hungry, help, get me out of here, not guilty, not guilty, and they're banging their, their cup, you know, I don't know if they have bars or whatever, but, you know, you know, in the cowboy days, they would do their cup like this, and, <laughs> and so, uh, and so the prisoners heard them, and verse 26 says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, <laughs> and uh, so that the foundations of the prison was shaken, yes. so the very foundation was shaken, and so there was a lot of movement. The prisoners are probably like, oh, my gosh, what is going on here? And, and, um, and so what happened here, when the prisons were shaken, immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. Everybody in the stockades were just, all their bands, their feet bands, their arm bands, they, they were loose, just like that by the power of the Holy Spirit. So how did that happen? In the middle of a crisis, in the middle of suffering, in the middle of darkness, in the darkest dungeon, Paul and Silas, they knew something. So when you, when you get into fellowship and praise and worship, you know something. You know your God. You get to fellowship. You know, like genosco, the Greek word, you know your God. So they know that they have a mission from God. I'm on a mission from God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The real mission. Glory to God. And, uh, and so, uh, and of course, says the, the, the keeper of the prison, awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword. He would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had fled. He would have been in a lot of trouble. 
<clears throat> excuse me, verse 28, but Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm for we are all here. So they didn't run out. If you were locked up in prison in the worst prison and everything fell off of you, first thing you do is you You'd be out the door. I don't know about you, but I'd be out the door. I'm like, I'll run as far from that prison as possible. Hallelujah. But they didn't. He, he said, we're all here. Yes. So that means that even the prisoners were still there. You know, they're probably going to watch out after Paul and Silas. Well, let's do what they're going to do. You know, you know, people watch you. You're praising, you know, and if they're hungry and thirsty, they'll, they'll, they'll want to do what you're going to do. You know, hallelujah. And so they were not surprised that they were going to be delivered. They were not surprised. They were so absorbed in worshiping. So absorbed in worshiping. We were talking about our, our, uh, our pastor that's in heaven now uh, after John Osteen was uh, Steve Teal. He would get so, I mean, he was a man that knew the presence of God. And he would get so lost in worship. You know, we're telling Pastor Robert, our Wednesday night services, you're lucky if you got out of there before 1030 at night. All the kids from school, they'd be asleep or, you know, because he would just, he would just hold his arms like that and he would go, oh, and he'd pray in the spirit. I love you. I love you. You remember that? And he would walk up and down the platform saying, oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then he'd get kind of stumbling, you know, because he felt the presence so strong. But he was in in the spirit, so deep just by worshiping God. And so I would imagine Paul and Silas said, oh, praise God. Oh, we love you. We know that you are God. And, and Lord, if you set the Israelites free from, from uh, Egypt, you can do the same thing for us. And, and they were, you, you know, they were, I can imagine they were recalling all the miracles that were happening of past. That's why uh, the Lord has uh, all of the, the Passover, everything to remind us, you know, to remind us of the Holy Communion. And so they were just praising, like, thank you, dear Jesus. Uh, uh, they, were, they were backed up by the Red Sea and the Egyptians, but you delivered them. Yeah. And so they're just worshiping, and that's probably coming out of their spirit. And so they're just loving on him. So they accessed God's will by becoming fully engaged. I like how Pastor Nancy always says that, become fully engaged. Fully engaged, fully absorbed, like my Pastor Teal. He would be like, oh, glory, glory. And to me, I think he, he forgot that there was an audience out there. He forgot that it's a school, school week. And <laughs> so a little bit, of, finally he said, anybody, you guys want to go, some want to stay, stay, you know. And, and, and it was like that. You know, the presence of God was so stronger. 20, I think we we're 25 years ahead, ahead <laughs> of, of our time in, in the spiritual and so let's look at uh, Ephesians 5.19. Ephesians 5.19. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lord tells us about worship. He tells us uh, this is how, how you do it. And you say, well, I worship God. You know, there's a certain way to access the power uh, uh, to... to uh, to flow with God. <clears throat> Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourself in psalms, psalms, number one, hymns, number two, and spiritual songs. Let's all say that. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so uh, he tells that speak to yourself in this. Hallelujah. You know, praise and worship is so important. It is so important. And you know, I speak to all, all those listening, everyone. You have a church and, you know, don't miss the praise and worship because that's where you're going to access the power. Do you know that in, in, in all the words, the anointed words of, of uh, not, all, not every song, but the certain songs that are led by the Spirit, they can set you free. If you come to church downcast and, and, and sorrowful and you just get into the praise of worship, before you know it, all that lifts. Yes. And in the words of the song, you can get your answer. Yes. Amen. You can get your answer. Hallelujah. Many times I have gotten the answer mm. simply by praise and worship. Yes. Praise and worship. So do everything you can to be ready to get every praise and worship song in your spirit. Mm. Amen. 
So it says here that, that you're to speak to yourselves. So that means there's praise and worship in the church, but how about speaking to yourselves? And you speak to yourselves, that means that, that you're, 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 uh, you're singing to yourself, you're worshiping to yourself. And so let's go over one, the Psalms, hymns, spiritual song. Let's go to Psalm. Psalm, a psalm is a spiritual poem or an ode. Ode to me, I went to Reagan High School. Now they changed the name now in Houston, Texas. Ode, uh, there was a, our alma mater. It was old, ode to the, our alma mater. You know, everybody has a, a high school song, the high school chants. You know what I'm talking about? You know, uh, go ode to Reagan High. You know, it's an ode, you know, an honor they're given. You know, like, we are for this school, and we're going to fight, we're going to win all the games, and, you know, and they're, they are honoring their school. Well, here, the psalm is a spiritual poem or ode to our God. David wrote most of the psalms and his chief priests. It's an ode to God. This spiritual poem encourages you that you're on the right path. We're going we're gonna to look at some of these. I mean, you can, your homework is going to be all over the psalms. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful, you know, when you're in the psalms. So say, for instance, <clears throat> it encourages you that you're on the right path, understanding what the will of the Lord is by speaking to yourself in a psalm to find out. For instance, uh, I just happen to open one. It says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. Pause and think about that. That's just Psalm 68, 19. So you're, you're, blessed be the Lord. You were given ode. We're, ge we're given this, uh, these words to the Lord. He who daily loads us with benefits. Thank you, Lord. That's the will of God for me to be loaded with benefits every day. Even God of our salvation. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for my salvation. I'm in the right place. An unsaved person couldn't do that because they haven't been saved yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then uh, 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 in the, uh, Psalm 6, 8, 1, it says, Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. So you're like, oh, I just praise you, God, because you're arising, and my enemies, it's come against me at work or my neighbors, that they're going to be scattered because it's the devil doing this. And so, you know, and so it's letting you know what the will of the Lord is. You know, I, I love it. One of my, my favorites is Psalms 66. It's in verse 12. It says, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads, and we went, went through the fire, we went through the water, but thou brought us out into our wealthy place. And so you're saying, oh, thank you, Lord, we have a wealthy place. Thank you, Lord, we have a, a, a beautiful church and a beautiful home. Now we're praying for home. And so he's going to bring us out to our, our wealthy habitation. Amen. And so, you know, you get so encouraged when you start out with a psalm. Now let's go to hymns. Hymns is song of praise and worship directed to God in your spirit. A song of praise. And, you know, I bet we thought the hymns was, uh, look at page 145 in the hymnal, and, you know, amazing grace, how sweet that, you know. It's called hymns, you know, because back then a lot were inspired by the Holy Spirit. But hymns in here is really songs of praise and worship directed to God in your spirit. When we, when we finished praise, praise and worship, worship, we, we were just thanking God and said, oh, Lord, uh, 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 you're, you're so wonderful. We exalt you. And just whatever comes out of your spirit, you're singing a hymn unto God. You're singing a, a, a private hymn just from you to him in a hymn. Amen? <laughs> That's a good way to remember. What's a hymn? A private song from you to him in a hymn. Amen? Amen. So there's psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I want you to get that. Let's say it again. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So spiritual songs is revelation of the Spirit. Your revelation, not the singers, not the praise and worship team. Yours. It's a revelation of the Spirit, spiritual song. You know, you can just sing in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Rabasiria, la Rabasiria. 
And then, and then all of a sudden, this happens a lot in, in early morning prayer. We're seeing it in the, or, or prayer before service times. We're, we're, we're just praying in the spirit. We're singing in the spirit and something comes out like, and God will give us a word. God will give us a word. You know, like grace, grace, grace. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. It's just something that God just drops in you. You know, uh, and, and so you're singing these spiritual songs. It's a revelation of the Spirit. Yeah. You know, just, just, just God is revealing some things, and he's dropping things into you. He's like, like and then you're singing it out. And you could be uh, um, a singing in the Holy Ghost, like a prophetical song. And then, and then you get the interpretation of that. The more and more you do that. So they're spiritual songs. So, you know, you want to start out in the morning, uh, you know, looking at the Psalms that ode, and, and, and just, just look and just say, you know, Lord, uh, evening, morning, and noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and, and ye shall hear my voice. You know, just praying these psalms out to the Lord. That gets you stirred up in the spirit. And then the hymn, songs of praise and worship, direct it to him. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just worship you, Jesus. Oh, you're going to be with me today in the car. Hallelujah. You're moving the traffic out of the way. And the angels are, are, are letting me get by on that certain exit. You know, you know, these, uh, uh, you know you're just, you're just uh, uh, affirming an affirmation in, in the spiritual songs that come out you know, after that. So, so, you know, it doesn't take long to get in the spirit when uh, you, you are determined that you want to fellowship with God. First thing in the morning. You know, but it doesn't have to be first thing in the morning. You know, you, you just pray in the Holy Ghost first thing in the morning, then all of a sudden at lunchtime or a break time or, or in your car, then all of a sudden these are just coming out your spirit. And we're, we're not just to do it first thing in the morning. It's good to, but do it continue all day long, all day long. Amen. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and it's like, oh, you know, have, have you ever been sound asleep and then your brain wakes up? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, my brain wakes up and it's like, oh, Jesus, I just love you. Thank you, Father, for such a beautiful day that you give us, Lord. Oh, I just worship you. I just worship you. And then just go back to sleep. Sometimes to the Lord, unless the Lord tells you to intercede. <laughs> Let's look at Colossians 3, 316. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We are entering an era and I'm saying this prophetically. I feel it. I know it. You know it and you know it. We're entering an era, era, E-R-A, to where worship is so important. It's intense. Worship is intense. And things start happening in worship. Let me give you an example. How many of you know Benny Hinn? Do you know that uh, he rarely says, if anybody is sick, come up here so I can lay hands and pray for you. Never. It's always after they've been healed. The he'll sing a song like, let there be blessings and glory and honor. Uh, blessings to Jesus or something like that, you know. Uh, or in his presence. You know, he'll sing these songs and the spirit of God starts moving and the people start getting healed. Amen. Presence of the Lord comes. The presence of the Lord to heal it starts coming, and then he says, come on up, tell me what the Lord did to you. And then he'll lay hands on him and give him a double dose, you know. And so this is a, a, what, what, what's going to start happening in this era. We need to start uh, going deeper in the spirit. The Lord is going to give us some deep, rich words of prophecy in the spirit, you know, through our praise and worship. You know, we, uh, I, I, I long for the days, once again, to where, you know, those that want to leave, you can leave, but we're just here in the spirit worshiping in the spirit worshiping in the spirit when i first got saved i got saved under an evangelist dorothy davis who's in heaven and uh i was only 17 and she would uh just get so deep in the spirit that was the end of the revival times of jesus movement back then and uh and and one day just in worship we just we were worshiping god so much that she wouldn't even preach because she would be so under the spirit and then she'd just fall out behind the pulpit and we knew just to leave her there she would be there till five o'clock the next morning you know the her husband her husband the co-pastors would just leave her alone and they just stay in the sanctuary some intercessors they would just stay there and then the lord would give her an amazing amazing 
uh, visions from God, that's going to start happening. But see, we have to start learning this to be engaged in worship. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.16, it says here, <clears throat> Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I like how it says grace in your heart to the Lord. Not doing it just uh, like the Pharisees uh, uh, so that everybody can see that, that you're worshiping. You know, all that stuff is this old, you know. It, it, the deep worship, that, that is what, what this era is entailing. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, 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 richly. Let it be rich. I mean, like, not skim milk, but heavy cream. Heavy cream is rich. There's a vast difference. It's like, oh, I praise you, hallelujah, amen, and you're out the door. But richly. They're like, I got my word for the day. Uh, you know, love, you, love your enemies. And, and, you know, and then you forget about it. And, you're, you know, you say, well, what was the church about today? And, oh, I forgot. It's not richly in you. So he says to let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Wisdom. The word gives you wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. So you're going to tell your brother and sister, oh, wasn't that a good service today? Oh, wow. And, and one will say, yeah, you know, the Lord ministered to this. I was really feeling this and this, and the Lord, you know, ministered this and this. And, you know, you're admonishing one another. And so it says again in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So that spiritual poem or ode unto God, the songs of praise uh, and worship directed to God in your spirit, and then those spiritual songs, revelation, revelation, hallelujah. And so if you're facing a problem, uh, worship brings your attention to God and off focus of your situation. But you have to press in, press in, and before you know it, you're fully engaged. If you make a determination to press in, before you know it, you're fully engaged all attentive, you and him, and you just keep pressing. Be being filled. You have to keep on being filled and keep pressing, keep pressing in. Uh, uh, before you know it, you're just like, you're lost in the spirit. You're just so lost in the spirit. You know, that's when you know that you totally forgot about your problem. You totally forgot about it. You know that the, those times are coming that the worship is going to be so deep you're not going to have to come to the altar and say, Pastor, can you pray for me? I'm really having a problem at work. You know why? Because it's so rich and full in you. You're like, what problem at work? <laughs> you just take that Holy Ghost to work and it just, you know, the devil has to flee. You resist the devil and he flees. Yes. You resist him in your worship. Just like, Amen. oh, it's only you, you know, and you, you just, just worship him. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> I saw, uh, I'm laughing because I, I saw this, uh, I saw this, this spirit uh, that's trying to, to come around our, our, our home. And, uh, and, and me and, and Pastor really been pressing in, pressing in. And he just like, I kid you not, the arms hanging down. He, he just walked, just left out of our room. <laughs> and to me, I felt like he was like, can't do nothing here. I better go. Can't do nothing here. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what we want. We want our worship to be so rich, the word so rich in us, and our, and our worship so rich in us that, that, that you want him to flee, he'll flee. Right. You know, he'll get, he'll like be so discouraged, like it, it, can't, it can't, can't do nothing here. Can't do nothing here.